Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Bartlett Guest Seminar Series, Speculative Design. So Speculative Design is a roundtable seminar series that discusses the meaning, impact, and applications of speculation in design. Every seminar, we will be inviting guests from all over the world with various disciplines uh, to discuss a sub-theme. So just a heads up, tomorrow we will be having uh, professionals working in strategic foresight in the context of urban design for the round table. And then they will be mapping the contemporary trends in risk and life cycle management, policy design and AI ethics, regulatory sandbox and microeconomics and their impacts on the future of urbanism. So without further ado, today we're gonna have a seminar with Alberto Fernandez, Garvin Goipol, Baha and Baha Odeba. Unfortunately, David Doria won't be able to join us today. So the theme of today is to discuss their visions on speculation, particularly in architecture and building. So through automata theory and cellular architecture, mixed reality and fabrication and construction, mathematics and parametric applications, the guests will converse around how these ideas can be synthesized in diversifying production pipelines. So Cool. And a little introduction to our guests. Um, Alberto Fernandez is architect, academic, and researcher of the University of Chile, Master in Architecture of University College London, and Reba Chartered Architect. His career has been developed uh, between academia and professional practices, exploring form designed from the local perspective as a contribution to global issues, applying BIM, generative design, and digital fabrication at different scales. Now he is the digital design tutor at UCL Bartlett and the advisory board member of Perspectives Journal from the same school. So our guest Garvin Goipel is a PhD researcher at the Chinese University of Hong Kong, specialized in augmented reality, implementation and fabrication and design processes. He has studied architecture and received his degree master in architecture distinction from University of Applied Arts in Vienna in the Grackling studio and gained professional experience working with several practices, including Coupe Homoblau in Fianna. So his work has been published in conferences such as Acadia, and he has taught AR and design workshops at multiple international institutes. In 2001, he is part of the organizing committee for the 26th Cadria Conference. And in Zurich, he joined the ETH uh, Block Research Group in 2020. As for Baha Odeba, he has dedicated uh, for half a decade from design to production, and he has worked in the field of product and interior design at Studio DJ in Amman. He has gained experience in tooling and surfacing while delivering solutions for the Jordanian market. So in the field of women's fashion accessories and shoe design in Italy, getting to know the form from the human body and culture perspective while gaining exposure to the marketing and branding aspect of the, in of the industry. For another half a decade, he worked in the field of architecture at various scales and topologies at Schneider and Schumacher Frankfurt, mainly in competitions, investigating math models in the built environment. So without further ado, let me start with our first guest, um, Garvin Goipel. Yeah, Can you see the screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you so much um, for the introduction provides. And just to, just to maybe make something sure that I'm actually not a speculative designer per se, but I'm still speculating about the future of architecture. And just one second. And uh, in detail about the future of fabrication. And I'm happy to share my work with you today about speculative fabrication methods. We are about to enter a new digital revolution where the real world is merging with the digital. This digital overlay is personalized and contextualized by referencing itself to its surrounding with a sensory awareness, augmenting your needs and tasks. Accelerating developments in wearable mixed reality hardware devices have the potential to extend our human abilities and enhance our reality digitally. Spatial computing has the potential to radically transform our workspaces and our perception of reality. We are entering a new phase of AR where the focus is shifting from a representation tool that displays general content on markers to a phase where mixed reality will be personalized, adapting to interacting with our surroundings and ourselves 
to create experiences that enhance our reality. My research focuses on the spatial design opportunities and construction related impacts from augmented and mixed reality technologies integration into the architectural design and design implementation. Today, I will go through a few of my projects that focus on this topic, starting with obstruction, what I call the construction under the aid of augmented reality. For this project in 2018, I decided to do a proof of concept that will showcase how to fabricate a building part only by the aid of holographic instructions without the need of any 2D drawings. The reconstruction of a well-known iconic piece that everybody knows and can relate to would prove this case more strongly than an own design. I chose the geometrically complex south wall of Corbusier's Chapel Notre Dame du Haut to be reconstructed by obstruction in scale one to five. For the fabrication strategy, I did a reinterpretation of the initial concrete wall into a space frame, which I optimized in regards of the window openings, less material and structural behavior by keeping enough points for the cladding, which will be added later. The reinterpretation aimed to come as close as possible to the original shape. The holographic fabrication manual guided the user to place beams according to the lengths in the respective locations by the selecting from a color-coded storage box, which colors match the length groups of the beams. This allows an easy and intuitive assembly of a complex 3D space frame. The holographic manual is divided in multiple steps, which can be visualized by enabling or disabling multiple layers for the holographic overlays. This method enables a broader public to participate in complex building processes, as holographic instructions do not necessarily require an intensive prior training as for the translation of 2D drawings to the fabrication site. To prove this, I chose a public street to invite pedestrians to participate in this experiment. In the next step, augmented reality was used to cut the panels for the cladding. For the head-mounted displays, users could switch between the display layers and select specific parts for the reference or cut by using voice and gesture controls. This became very handy as the user has his hands free while navigating through the user interface and fabricating at the same time. With this, you always have the manual displayed as a holographic overlay without needing to turn away for the fabrication area in crucial steps to look at drawings, for example. You can see the different layers which can be switched on and off in the mobile applications as well. Or here through gesture and voice controls on the HoloLens. You can also see the collaboration between the holographic instructor who would give instructions to the assistant without holographic guidance due to a shortage of available devices. I would now like to go into more detail by showing you the outcomes of a recent workshop that I instructed for the Cadre conference this year. <coughs> the workshop provided a hands-on introduction to augmented reality construction and bamboo craft by combining theoretical study and practical experience. The goal of the workshop was to fabricate a bending active bamboo grid shell by the aid of holographic instructions. We used augmented reality for cutting the poles, aligning the grid, assembling the components, and finally for tracking the aspect structure to bring it back into the digital. The system itself allows for the components to be connected as a flat grid on the ground that can then be popped into shape by connecting them together with the so-called singularities. What we call singularities are the components that include pentagonal cells, which you can find on the four edges of the column. These singularities have to be assembled in a bended state and cannot be laid flat on the ground. They give the sculpture its shape and bend once connected to the column and top grid part. Throughout the workshop, participants were challenged to engage with both cutting edge air systems and an age old craft, working at the interface of technology and material culture. Over the course of the workshop, participants were working together to construct a temporary bamboo structure and gaining experience in the development and adoption of AR tools for project specific construction needs. We used Phologram, a third party plugin for Rhino, which streams the digital information directly to the HoloLens and mobile devices. Fabrication drawings, such as for cutting the bamboo sticks or laying out the flat grids, can be viewed as a holographic overlay through the head mounted display or mobile devices. We didn't use any measurement tapes since the holographic projections acted like a shadow puzzle that had to be transferred from the digital to the physical space. Red indicates poles in the U direction, which were placed first and green indicates poles in the V direction, which are connected with the poles below. To simplify the reachability of the parts, we decided to fabricate the installation upside down. After the singularities were connected, 
the column part was attached to the singularities. And with all components now connected and in place, we could finally rotate the installation. The system allows to adapt to indeterminacies that occurred in the form of moving zip tie connections during the bending and the flip. As you can see, the bending active grid shell can absorb some structural loads and is actually more stable than we expected. After completing the installation, small printed Aruko trackers are fixed on each intersection point of the bundle poles. These can be detected by the HoloLens in real time, resulting in a 3D point in Rhino in reference to the image target's position at the zero point. This allows to bring the physical structure back into the digital and study the deviations between the S built and digital plant model. We believe that augmented reality enhances the human capacities to participate in complex processes through simplified instructions, instead of surrendering human skill to automation and manufacturing. The next project that I want to show you is called Secret Whispers and Transmogrifications, which is a case study in online teaching of augmented reality technology for collaborative design production. With the whole world having gone into lockdown due to COVID, we have been invited by Digital Futures last summer to organize an online workshop on technology-related items. For this workshop, we decided to do an experiment in which we would see how slippage could be passed on from one person to another and still allow for a new end product to emerge. Similar to how if you would pass a story from one person to the other, the story itself would change and transmogrify over time to produce a new outcome. Our idea was to do this not with a story, but actually with a digital model, tapping into latest augmented reality technologies, as can be found in the HoloLens in the high end of the spectrum, but also in the widely available handheld devices like smartphones and tablets that we all have at our disposal across the world. The idea was to see if we could collaboratively with this widely available infrastructure, create an art project that would deal with digital modeling, slippage, and the emergence of beauty from this. The workshop is set up as an experiment in which a set of 14 figures was altered through several morphing cycles that oscillated between the analog and the digital world. Each iteration began by hand modeling a sculpture based on a given digital file. This was achieved by the aid of holographic instructions, which are displayed through an AR application on the participants' mobile devices. <clears throat> the result was then captured through multiple photographs taken with these devices that were then processed in a photogrammetry software. The resulting 3D files were then passed on to the next person for the following sculpting cycle until four iterations were achieved. You can see two examples on the slide, the base shape on the left, the transmogrified shapes in the middle, and the final outcome on the right. Here you can see the view through the mobile device that displays the holographic instructions. And here you can see some screenshots from the mobile devices taken by the participants showing the holographic guidelines. Augmented reality is used, sorry, augmented reality, uh, augmented reality is used to holographically overlay this digital information directly on top of the analog sculpture. App controls give the users the real-time ability to switch between the display of predefined contours and silhouettes, allowing them to decide as they sculpt which necessary guides to access to inform their addition or removal of material. This process is repeated until an analog interpretation of the digital file is accomplished. Photogrammetry was then used to capture the analog clay sculpture and bring it back into a digital modeling environment. A photo series by the participants was used as an input to regenerate a 3D digital model approximation to the analog model. The digital model was then passed on to the next participant for the next modeling iteration. Unique characteristics and qualities emerged as the transmogrifications by multiple authors accumulated with each step. Three cycles were completed, producing a total of 56 sculptures. The digital models were rendered for display in an online exhibition, presenting the collection in a virtual space visible by means of walkthroughs with 360-degree views. Today, AR-enhanced craftsmanship has the ability to be taught remotely and online around the world by the aid of XR integration. The study demonstrates that XR and photogrammetry technology have the ability to enhance clay modeling craftsmanship, allowing for technology-driven democratization of skill. The incremental slippage between sculpting iteration showcases how the hand can become a key component in these computer numerical controlled workflows. Unpredictable human imprecision, inaccuracy, and error can become a constructive qualitative part of the creative process. 
In doing so, the study proposes a counter-narrative to common research on robotics or CNC fabrication, aiming for higher accuracy and precision. Without going into too much detail about this project, I want to quickly show you how we used augmented reality in the project tool and where it worked and where it actually failed. As we were flying to Taiwan for this workshop, we planned to have a small diameter solid and young bamboo sticks that would allow for the bending. But being on site, there was actually no access to these, but to bamboo splits instead, which are much more floppy and fail structurally much more quicker. We therefore had to redesign the whole installation in one night to adapt to the indeterminacies occurring on site. Here, augmented reality was really helpful in getting a sense on site for the S plane structure in the redesigned scaled version. AR was also helpful in pushing significant points of the floppy base frame into the correct positions before stiffening the structure or densification. The idea was to also use AR guidance for the densification, but this was actually set out to be quite difficult as the build installation had too much deviations from the digital model, which made the alignment very challenging. On the left, you can see a system that we developed on how to precisely align bamboo splits at exact locations. We used this annotation system that guides you through multiple iterations for the following project. This is um, the last project that I'm going to show you today, which is called Argon. Argon is a complex bamboo sculpture built at the Chinese University of Hong Kong in the fall of 2019. This is a case study on how recent AI and MR tool developments can be extended towards applications centering on creative collaborative production. Argon is a freeform amorphous doubly curved shell surface made from bent interconnected bamboo splits that were either fixed mechanically with metal wire or woven into one another. Virtual digital information was holographically overlaid onto the field of vision of the sculptures to guide the manual actions during crucial steps of the production process using multiple Microsoft HoloLenses and several handheld smartphone devices. The base shape was designed to be highly irregular to test the ability of augmented reality setups to assist in the construction of non-standard form. Internal voids were embedded into the shape to increase surface double curvature for buckling resistance. An agent-based particle flow system was set up that generated flow patterns across the base shape. Two sets of particles would flow in perpendicular directions, becoming the guides for the two directions of the bamboo splits, which would give the doubly curved base surface the bidirectional strength and increased buckling resistance. The construction strategy consisted of splitting the base frame up into four main components for simultaneous fabrication by all four teams. The annotation and fabrication system for the space grid involved digital unrolling of all members, including their intersection points, which could then be straightforwardly be pre-drilled and rejoined. The space grid was then to be identified with additional bamboo splits according to the generated flow patterns. The base components would then be connected before being subject to a final round of densification. Each of these steps was relied on augmented reality to ease production. Let me now show you a short video, which is summarizing this method. You got an organ going there. No wonder the sound has so much body. We foresee this method to become far more effective in the future of fabrication than robotics or other forms of CNC production because augmented reality enables augmentation of on-site skill through the direct visual overlay of specific holographic instructions onto manual actions. Mixed reality enhances human on-site agency and increases labor forces capacity to participate in complex building processes instead of reducing the on-site need 
for human labor skill by shifting construction complexity to automated pre-manufacturing and reducing construction to the basic assembly of advanced kits of parts. Thanks to all the people involved in these projects, especially to Christoph Kroller, with whom I collaborated on the majority of these. And thank you all for your attention. Thank you. That's definitely a very architectural take on hyperreality. And I think there are a lot of questions around this area. But before that, let's hear out from Alberto Fernandez, and then we can have a roundtable all together. I think you muted Alberto. Always happens. Yeah, no. <laughs> yes, <laughs> trying, now. Trying to good. find the, 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 the interface here sometimes with Zoom is something complicated. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much for the invitation for today. Uh, I want to talk to, uh, with uh, about the speculative design with two projects that I'm running currently in, here and the budget. One is in specific is uh, is ready with a, a vertical focus capture device for water purposes, and which is speculative, but at the same time is, is real <laughs> because we you, 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 we, we must uh, develop uh, something from the digital digital design to uh, to something completely. Uh, uh, in certain way, different. And then, uh, and, and the other one is the cellular architecture uh, research that I'm running in the PhD, which uh, is is speculative about uh, how, how it's possible to create a, a high resolution space space uh, using the cellular automata uh, theory coming from the forties. Well, the first one, uh, well, the coastal fog, fog tower. It's a project that I'm running here with uh, my other friend in, in, the, in the bar, Nicoleta uh, Karstahi. And this uh, project started years ago. And trying to understand the, the, the problems that we, we have here in the, in the near future. So we have uh, over 2 billion people living in countries with this uh, water stress, which means that uh, they don't have fresh water. It's super simple. So uh, it's a, a specific problem. And then over that, uh, we, we can create some speculation that and but and then later a real project. So one of nine of the world's population don't have clean water for, uh, close to home. So, so super super clear. Then uh, we, we, here uh, you can see the map of uh, all the stress uh, that uh, you can uh, find uh, around the world related with the lack, lack of water, lack of fresh water, and from and then a projection uh, for, for the next uh, forty years, which is, is scary. Uh, more information about that. Uh, so, uh, this is a problem that is growing and growing and growing due to the, the climate change. So again, an, a real problem, but uh, what we can do with this? So uh, if, uh, we, we started to develop a, a device that uh, can uh, optimize the water capture in a vertical way instead of the traditional ones that are working in a horizontal way. Which is it sounds a little bit obvious, but uh, it's not so obvious. Usually you, you, you can build uh, quite light structures but uh, are with the uh, cheaper as well in theory cheaper but are quite uh, fragile in terms of uh, how this is, is uh, you can uh, set up this in in the in the real site and then the real site is destroying these structures in in a year or even less so uh, uh, there's the speculation was this one uh, a vertical tower in a higher format that can uh, can uh, catch water using four principles Mainly, uh, these principles are related with the, uh, the, re the constant repetition of the same element in, in the same sites, but uh, changing the, the direction and the, the torsion over itself. And then the, the, this was the, the, the first uh, result with, with, uh, with this speculative uh, approach. And then over that, uh, we started with a, a structural prototype, which is a, 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 as well, it, it's a, 
a uh, speculative uh, approach because it's something that we we just developed just using uh, raw materials, it's quite cheap, and at the same time uh, using the same principle but on a different scale. So we have the same as uh, a finite amount of elements. We have uh, some similar connectors and then uh, ju just few rings and let's try to do it in with two or three uh, workers on site. Then they, this was the first uh, approach. Then uh, this was built in a in a quite empty place in the in the, in the north of Chile, trying to understand the logic of uh, construction in a in a quite isolated area. Then uh, we jump to this third uh, sort of a prototype, following the same principles, but with a with a with a, this speculative approach, uh, understanding again the same the same idea. Okay, what we can do with the minimum amount of elements, what we can do with these elements, and how we can fabricate these elements. And so then uh, we, we develop a, a X-shaped foldable structure, then a 3D, uh, a 3D foldable uh, internal structure, then a collaborative structure, and then the, the result is this uh, kind of internal spiral that can catch water in a vertical way. Using just a, a, a 36 a joints, the 3D, 3D print, printed indeed, and developed by Grasshopper and, and just the visual algorithm. And then, well, they, they, again, the same logic. So a few workers, um, let's try to assemble this on site. And it, it, this was the result after one day of construction. So this spe speculation in, in, in that sense uh, is, 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 is pushing our ideas to a real environment at the end, addressing a, a real problem and then trying to find an answer to that. So the, the next step, well, again, returning to the speculation is how is, is about how to develop this in, with more technology, but with the same idea of uh, repetition. So we, we can fa fabricate you know, with digital tools, digital technology, uh, a finite amount of elements. And then let's try to understand uh, it, maybe we can develop this just with torsion and then just uh, uh, adding, adding and adding over itself the same, uh, the same geometry. Then well, the same idea. Uh, we, we develop a few tests in 3D printers, and then the virtual algorithm. It is not something, not it's not something new. You know, you 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 can, you can do it in in your in your computer without problems. But the the good stuff is is is, uh, is, is trying to understand at the end of uh, the day that okay, we have these technologies, but we we can speculate uh, all day with this with this uh, with these ideas. But then let's try to do something real with it from this speculative uh, perspective, and then how we can get uh, 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 after a uh, few iterations uh, from the reality, again, some, some new feedback for a new speculation, for a new step. So the, the fourth step now is uh, this is a Lima 2035 uh, approach. Uh, that is a, a real project that is, is ongoing in, the, in South America. And then uh, the same principle, uh, the, the lack of water in, the, in this, in this uh, case is the coastline of Peru. Um, we want to well, we, we want to explore now the, this idea of uh, the, the 3D printed component. Again, uh, the repetition, again, the same logic, applying technology, but trying to think out of the box sometimes. So we, we are developing this, but hopefully this is going to be done during the end of the year. And then uh, we, we, we run some simulations trying to uh, get some real data. <laughs> Because we are working with real projects at the end, with is speculating over itself. So then uh, we 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 run several uh, uh, wind channels uh, simulations, and then over that uh, idea, uh, we 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 are understanding that these kind of designs are uh, catching uh, uh, for fourteen thousand liters per day, which is a huge amount of uh, water. If you if you think that with a with one single structure you can feed. Uh, uh, at this uh, radius of a uh, really with uh, 5,000 trees. Uh, so then, uh, what, what, what if, uh, again, speculation, what if uh, maybe we, with a group of three, or a group of four, we can uh, in, in add more uh, efficiency in the, cap in, the, in the capture system? And then, yes, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, additionally, we are creating. A, it's not by an accident, but it's, it's something that is happening. Uh, uh, a park, a park in the in the in the hills uh, near Chulima, uh, ecologic park. And then the, the same uh, and again speculation and uh, having some uh, questions from 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 the from, from the people living there. What if it, 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 
maybe we can do the same thing with the same logic, but in a different scale. So we develop the same idea, the same principles in a different scales. And then we run uh, again the, the, the same simulations in a real site. And uh, well, okay, it, it's working in a quite interesting way. If with uh, 4,000 and a half religious per day, which is good for, uh, for a small community. And then uh, it, this is in the last part in this part of the presentation. Okay, well, let's try to understand how we can build this. So we are now with understanding the components, the logic of uh, densities between meshes, et cetera. And so this is a, it's, it's like a, a game of speculation, reality, speculation, reality, time by time. And we are learning in each part of the process because without speculation, it's impossible to push our boundaries. Then the next uh, project, server architecture from this grid to a high resolution space. This is more theoretical for sure. This is more academic, but uh, hopefully it's going to push uh, the dis disciplinary boundaries uh, again in the near future. So what is cellular architecture? Uh, it's, a, it's a theoretical and design research that explores the CA simulation for new ways to develop a, a space in a high resolution way. So as a growing design process in concert to the uh, top-down uh, methods of a design. Why? Because uh, with this idea, this is coming from the 40s, I'm asking what is the cellular architecture a digital design theory? Which is it's a little bit interesting. It's not just about uh, trying to de design a tool. Is, uh, um, is, is just trying to speculate, what if this idea can be a design theory? So uh, how can the relationship between computational knowledge and digital design can develop methodology that at the end CA can uh, answer the, the oh, can fulfill the, the space between the different scales in the, in the real environment, in the built environment. So this is a, a draft that I have about what is this uh, design theory. So in one hand or in one side, is, is everything is about the this discrete grids that are coming at the end from the mathematical uh, field. And then on the other side, I have the high resolution space, which is architectural and the digital design. And then CA is in the middle uh, and uh, is creating a constant dialogue between these two universes, the an a theoretical approach and a design approach. And then in between AI is emerging a design theory. So uh, this, this thesis is uh, structured in four principal areas, a, a theoretical one, an historical one, an environmental one, and the, the merge of the synthesis of, of these uh, three previous steps. So the theoretical approach. Uh, the, the theoretical approach is, uh, is it's, it's trying to understand how, <laughs> how these uh, CA families are working in, in an abstract way. So what is, what is the, a, a CA? So um, according to the, the, the research in this moment, uh, we have this uh, possible uh, output coming from CA from an elementary automaton, termites, lantern ants, lantern loops, patterns and worms, coat automaton, and Conway game, game of life. So the CA is a, is a it basically is a seed that can translate information from the built environment if we want to use it in an architectural purpose. Doesn't matter the scale. So in a three-dimensional space that you can see here, we, in a stacking system, we can uh, uh, create in, in quite interesting shapes that are, uh, at, the, at the same time are inspired by, by nature. So what is cellular automata? It's a, has been defined mainly as a physical simulation system which uses a cellular automaton, developed by mathematical computational models running a different limited set of rules inside a discrete simulated environment. So uh, it's, a, it's a simulation that activates and deactivates elements in the grid in a finite, with a finite a number of elements for sure. So uh, we have here embedded this idea of, of energy optimization and the material optimization. So that is interesting for the architectural purposes. So let's try to speculate a little bit over that. So uh, we have a, in a cellular automata way of thinking, four principles that are, uh, are defining if a CA is a CA or is not a CA. Neighborhood, discrete systems, abstractions, and dynamism. And um, curiously, these four uh, principles are in dialogue with architecture because neighborhood for sure, you, you can understand a, neighbor, a neighborhood concept from the architectural perspective. A discrete system, if you think in a, in a, in a, in the, in a discrete way of logic of construction, this is super possible with building blocks. It's, it's the same idea you would uh, a, a limited set of uh, geometries and elements and with aggregations over itself. 
is, is, is a part of the dialogue uh, be, between uh, DC, CA logic and the architectural way. Abstraction for sure is part of our discipline because uh, we are thinking in abstract, abstraction models in the architectural field as well. Why not in the uh, CA uh, way of thinking? And dynamism as, as well, architecture is, dy is dynamic. We, don't, we, don't, we, we need to understand that and all the design process now are, are running in that way. So uh, these four elements can define a CA to an architectural translation in different scales. And then we are using a CA coding as read it from the real context, generating special solutions from architectural, architecture in a quantitative and in a qualitative approach. Why? Because we are working in a, in a duality. Uh, we can work with a quite a specific uh, numbers and maths in one side, but on the other hand, we are thinking in a, in how this is, a space uh, looks, uh, how what I can uh, perceive uh, uh, touching one material, uh, what, what is happening with me when I'm, I'm, I'm living one space. So then, an historical approach from a perspective, if trying to understand from where this is coming, and it's super curious that at the end, if we are if we if we, are, if we are putting all the elements from the historical perspective. A uh, CA is a, is a, is coming from maths, but gradually, uh, in from the the end of the fifties, uh, this uh, has been applied in the in the architectural field, but not thinking in CA in a specific way. It's just this uh, this concept, these uh, ideas were uh, gradually uh, arriving to our field with uh, the Jonas Friedman with the Billy Spaziale as well with the metamodist movement, and then so the price with Gordon Pass with the Fan Palace, the 60s, then uh, the flat writer from Jamal Friedman as well, uh, Abita uh, 67 of uh, Moshe Shafie and the Expo Oxaga. And then in parallel, uh, uh, John Fraser uh, with the reptile structure system was the first one who uh, specifically uh, used CA as a way of uh, thinking in how to build something in the in architecture. And Nicolas de Graporte uh, with the architectural machine and working with Jonah Friedman with the Fry writer, they create this connection, uh, the final connection between the architectural field and the mathematical and physical simulation field altogether. So then now what we are what we are doing now is, uh, is we are trying to uh, apply this the same logic that's coming from the uh, CA generation, but it, uh, understanding that with these ideas, we can optimize a, a construction process, design process. We, we, we are dreaming in how to build things on Mars and in, in the moon for sure, using these ideas. NASA is working with that, with automation, with a mini robot that can uh, crawl and that can uh, add material, ma material in this discrete way, because that's the reason why this is started in, uh, from the 40s at the end. And then we have this environmental urban architectural approach, which is, uh, which is something that is, I'm, I'm, I'm still working on that. But uh, using the same principles of CA, uh, it's possible to increase the resolution of our space, increase the resolution of our ideas. And then uh, following automatic steps over the same logic, we can, uh, we can develop a interesting ch uh, shape in 2D, 3D and 2.5D uh, in binary configurations that uh, can uh, create digital designs. And uh, these digital designs are, 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 are working from the be beginning of the CA as crystal growing simulations, which is super interesting. Why they, they, uh, they use the, this uh, analogy from, from mathematics to, to something new? Because at the end, if you want to develop something new, you must think in something different. So crystal growing simulations, uh, in a certain way, it sounds weird, for, um, for mathematical purposes, but now it sounds super logic because uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a system that is, 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 is existing in the natural world that is adding in the most efficient way possible material over itself. So a CA uh, is, is using the same logic and from microscopical scale to urban scale crossing different uh, possibilities. And then with that, you can simulate uh, cities, you can, you can simulate uh, environmental condition as well. You can uh, simulate uh, uh, the uh, architectural spaces for sure. 
then uh, it's possible to to play with the, with, with this uh, with this uh, element in different ways like this one that I'm I'm just uh, uh, testing here because at the end uh, this uh, discrete coordinates are just the beginning for something different we can replace that with different elements because we want we want to build something with this at the end so merge and uh, synthesis uh, architectural space can evolve from an initial state uh, as a living living organism so you, here we have the set the the same principle running, the same idea, the same aggregated logic, but with different results. Just changing the, the input, the, the input is environment. In this case, it's based on images. Then we, we can uh, test it, the, the structural uh, integrity, just 3D printing it, and then it's working, it's, it's working and it's quite stable, which is super curious. No, it's not super curious because if you have a continuous shape uh, running, running in a, in a generative way, at the end, the the final solution is the most the, the the most or the most efficient possible way to translate something. And then, if we are replacing this collection of points with another kind of geometry, uh, the final result is is it, 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 it could be or it must be uh, coherent from uh, uh, following the same idea of uh, co coherence. Then, at impossible variations, uh, this uh, this logic can in, uh, in, uh, increase the resolution. Uh, if you if we are uh, replacing this collection in a different way, so well trying to uh, translate and trying to uh, think again out of the box, uh, the, the the principles now are are, are running this way, you know, um, from the uh, quite uh, the decoding uh, area throughout our software, right? And then why not to the beam uh, to the beam simulation because we, we can we can do it, we we can uh, test it, we can try it. Why not? To, to use these ideas in the in the real world, and the real world means being sometimes and being we have these two main platforms, and uh, right now we have the connection, the possibility to do it, and and when we can rebuild a unique geometry, highly coherent from the beginning to the end, point by points, layers and rows. In this way, like an example, as a, as a previous uh, test, and it 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 looks coherent and uh, quite dense and quite unique, so. This is what, what, what's going on if we, if we are thinking out of the box, if we are trying to speculate, but at the same time, if we want to push our boundaries in a, in a quite productive and unique way. So this has been my presentation. Thank you very much. And um, let's go to the next one. Yes, thank you so much for your presentation. I guess um, for this seminar, we specifically invited um, people who are both practicing and also doing PhD and like also doing research in all different fields, because there's always this constant question that comes up from student like with their speculative design portfolio where they can apply and like when speculation touches reality, how much is lost or how much is actually gained in the process. So I think it's definitely for relevant cases that we see how we go from speculative uh, fabrication to actually fabricating how we go from speculation and cellular automata to actually designing with uh, cellular automata. 